Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with our lunar station because of course uh, we need to worry about supplies again. It's got 50 odd days worth. Uh, we also need to pay attention to Spaceport 2. It's only got two crew there. I think I'm going to want to do some sort of crew rotation here. Bring, uh, let's say, uh, two of them back and bring uh, one new crew with a new pod uh, later on. But uh, we could we could just leave two crew here. These two resupply vessels are empty now, and so I'm gonna start off by deorbiting them. And I wouldn't want to deprive you of seeing these crash into the moon, so we are going to do that. So undock. Now somebody suggested making larger supply pods. I don't think that's really the solution I'm looking for. What I want are recycling units, so that when we bring the supplies uh, they won't be consumed so fast and we'll rebalance it so that there's more food and less water and oxygen so that the recycling unit will recycle the water and oxygen and things will last longer. The thing about uh, having a larger pod is that you know you've got more uh, you know you need a larger rocket, it costs more, there's more risk and everything. Oops. So yeah, I I'd like to work on the recycling units. Our next thing is this Jovian 1 in 35 days and then Ganymede Launcher in 81 days. A Ganymede Lander, sorry. I think um, if we can supply, well, yeah, if we can supply for half a year, at least we'll get through these. That would be good. Still plenty of Jupiter and Saturn missions to deal with. And of course, uh, we don't want to overshoot the, the Voyager transfer window. That's August 20th, 1977, as we recently learned. It, we just passed the 40th anniversary, and I did a video on that. I reserved too much Delta V for this purpose. I need to keep less Arizine and 204 in here. And... Yep. Impact recorded. Science report can now be accessed from one of your accelerometers. I don't know if I have any accelerometers, but... Okay, well, uh, we can do that sort of thing. I guess that's one constructive use of our resource transfer pods. I might want to actually deploy accelerometers first, though. I don't know, do I have any probe on the surface that can record that sort of thing? Um, that's just a flag. That, that thing's landed. Can we switch to that? Come on, Kerbal. We need to do science here. Alright, well, here is our lunar mini probe. You might remember this little guy. Um, collect impact data? Oh, there we go, impact data. An impact event was recorded which caused seismic activity. 87.5 science. And doesn't look like that meter is filled up at all. Uh, okay, we've got electric charge, transmit. Well, this thing's got to be really handy. Okay, uh, well, we've got another one to impact. Are we going to get more impact data? And why is there the separate record impact data? Okay, well, that's micrometeor uh, micrometeorite impact. Okay, um, all right, well, let's try our other refueling vessel currently at the station and impact that on the surface and see if we can get even more data. This is all empty except for electric charge and probably more Arizona and 204 than we strictly needed. We could definitely uh, get these back to uh, Earth orbit, a uh, high Earth orbit, very high Earth orbit, but I don't know whether I want to go through that whole rigmarole of trying to, like, you know, bring supplies. I don't think it's worthwhile to reuse them that much. The whole point of them was to be relatively cheap. Okay, definitely on that hillside there. Yep, impact recorded. Okay. Okay, whoop, it popped a little bit. 
Um, it's not letting me click on it. And there's also added lag. I think jumping around from best of the best. Oh shoot! No, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh great. Uh, well, collect impact data before we impact. 53 science only this time. Okay, well, now I have to land it back again. RCS might be important. Maybe not upright. Ah, uh, we've got too much. Oh. Okay, okay, just off. Skidding, skidding. Come on. Okay, I think it'll be all right. Okay, so here we are with Chrisley and Kerman, and she's gonna transfer to the moon port, and then we're going to transfer two Kerbals back on the spacecraft already attached. At least that's the plan. So throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. Will be quite interesting to have a little spacecraft all to yourself, especially when it's on this big rocket. Obviously meant for three, but we've got an extra person on uh, the moon port right now. There are four Kerbals there, and the spacecraft currently attached can only bring three back, so. Want to even that out a little bit. Somebody had mentioned that I should add a science lab to this moon port station. Moon port. Gotta remember to do that. But we are in the middle of all these interplanetary missions and mainly when it comes to the moon port and our station around the Earth, my goal is to just, you know, have them supplied while we take care of the interplanetary stuff. I think I'm turning a little bit too quickly though. Oh, we've lost one engine. Okay, uh, I'm igniting the center engines now. That'll help with the balance. We're high enough that they should have their full ISP anyway. So this one is the one I need to worry about. Okay, uh, well, no, I uh, stop that. Okay, I timed that wrong. Okay, come on back. Hmm, that could have been a bad disaster, Chrislean. That could have been very bad. Seems like I made a mistake on something right there. But, we're still safe. For now. Okay, let's see. It's part of the launch escape system. Launch escape system. Boy, uh, that kind of a problem. I don't know if the launch escape system would ignite in time to save anybody. No, nope. that would be pretty dodgy. All right, so I launch this escape system off. Okay, coming up on core stage separation. And separation. And ignition. I don't know how much Delta V we lost on those boosters. Hopefully not too much. We will see. Alright, we are close to making orbit here. And maybe a little bit of a pitch up is a good idea. Okay, and... Shut down. That's good enough. 303 by 158. 
good enough to transfer. Hopefully, we're going to be transferring at the periapsis, but let me plot it out and see. All right, we have a plot for the moon, but we seem to have more relative inclination with respect to the station than I would, strictly speaking, like. So that's not so great. Uh, we'll have to take it for now. Uh, Art, thank you. And we'll get set up here. We should be fine. I trust that we have enough fuel in the pod to get us there. It's the making sure we reserve enough fuel to get back part. That's a little bit different. But then again, we've been regularly delivering fuel to the station. So if we end up a little bit short of what we need to come back, we could always add some more fuel from what we've sent there already. Okay, it says very unstable. We've got to watch out for this J2. It doesn't change the icon when it's very unstable. I don't know why. But let's stabilize that fuel. Okay, and ignition. on our way. So hopefully we can get Chrisley in there, get uh, two Kerbals back, then we need to do a um, resupply mission. Well, we'll see how much... Uh, well, I mean, we might be able to do this Jovian one first and then do the resupply mission. We'll try that. Mix it up a little bit. Okay, getting ready to shut down. Actually, I would like to set this on a crash course to the moon. Uh, just so we can dispose of it. We've got uh, quite enough debris hanging around as it is without yet another lump. So let's do that. Okay, we should probably go for that and then uh, do the rest with the pod. So, checking to make sure staging is correct. We separate. Okay, that changed it a little bit. Let me just uh, quickly verify that it's still on a crash course. along with everything else here. Uh, what is its course? No, not at all. Um, we might need to tone down those separation motors if we really want to keep this on a, uh, to get this on crash courses and everything. Yeah, that, that really pushed it off to the side, didn't it? Yeah, maybe we should just remove those separation motors. They're a little bit too powerful. Anyway, back to the main mission at hand. Alright, so I've handled a 12 meter per second mid-course correction and now we are in Lunar SOI and approaching our periapsis where we will make the burn to make orbit and also correct our pretty high relative inclination with respect to the target. So we are going to take about 1,275 meters per second to do that, which is not nice. But that should still leave us with plenty of Delta V to return home. Pretty close, but uh, still quite a gap there. Well, we really haven't corrected all of the relative inclination here. Still quite a lot of that to go. But this is probably the occasion where we're going to get our closest approach distance. Let's just have SAS hold it. Oh, darn, I lost my target. Okay, let's stop it there because the relative inclination is going up again. And let's see what further correction might be needed. Uh, well, it's not indicating much of... Well, let's see. It should catch up to us partly, but not fully on this orbit. Oh no, it goes ahead. Shoot. I made a mistake. Okay, well, I'm going to have to use a little bit more fuel than I wanted to. That's not going to be great, but again, we can refuel this if necessary. Okay, I think we've got an intersection point going there, but it'll cost another hundred. Still enough fuel to get back without refueling, but it's getting tighter. Okay, we are closing in and getting parallel to the dock.
just stalking on the opposite side of the other Orpheus pod. Okay, last little bit here. Uh, I'm wondering whether I should turn the smart ASS stuff off. Uh, wait, oh right, hovering over smart ASS means that you can't control things. Maybe we're close enough here. Well, there's a suggestion of some magnetism there. Um, don't know whether it's totally convinced about the whole thing. Let me try and push them towards each other. There we go. All right. Now, which pod is which? Uh, well, the one with the single Kerbal in, Chrysalian is in here. So this is the new pod. This is the old pod. Uh, here we have Bill, Joan, and Lara. Right. So uh, we want to keep three here, I guess, is the plan. Um, Bill is an engineer. Valentine is a pilot. Maybe we should just have uh, Chris Lee and do a sort of pilot thing. Cause, well, we've got a lot of pilots, actually. We'll send Joan back. So it'll be Chrysalian and and Bill and Valentina that stay. We don't have a scientist around here, so that's not good. We need to work on that. But for now, Valentina is in here. Chrysalian in here, and let's transfer crew. Uh, Bill goes in here. I don't think this needs this bit of fuel, but eh, it'll be alright. Food, water, and oxygen, it only has a little bit. We might want to give it a little bit more. Just for safety's sake. Yeah, let's say one-sixth of its capacity. No, that seems a little bit low. I think I made it for 30 days, and we probably want maybe 7 days, so let's say a quarter. But it's only carrying 2. Well, oh, it goes in slower than it goes out. Right. Okie dokie, I think we're all set. We've got Joan and Lara in here, and we're going to bring them back home after a fairly long stay out here. I think that is fair. Undock. So now, now that that's done, let's see. They've got only five days of oxygen. Well, we'll try and make it back in that time. Moonport 1 has 80 days now with three crew. It turns out that our return can't be done in uh, such a short amount of time. We will re-rendezvous with the station. Shouldn't take too long. But let's see. Let's plot it out. Well, let's undo that for now. And we might need to readjust a little bit later. We have the weird inclination thing going. Okay, so RCS is on. We're backing away from the station. And we have a node in an hour and 27 minutes. As far as the rest of our schedule goes, uh, 27 days till Jovian 1. We probably need to start building all the Voyager window missions. See how many of those we can do. Okay, well, let's hold it right there. We're not going to be able to bring the periapsis down as much as I would like. But uh, 4 days and 8 hours right now to periapsis, and we've got five days and nine hours worth of oxygen for a margin of one day. We will keep that in mind. Well, our continuous habitation of our stations will continue. We don't have to worry about this oxygen warning. It just means that it's one-tenth full. It has more capacity than I thought it does. did. 
I forget what the correct number was. As usual, as usual. With one day worth of food, water, and oxygen, well, really oxygen, to spare, I don't think there's going to be too much of a problem. So, uh, even if we skip out. So let's say 55.6 right now. There's no reason why once we get close we can't use the rest of this fuel to slow ourselves down a bit. That could help. I don't want to change the periapsis, I just want to bring down that apoapsis. Okay, we'll cut it there. Come on. Alright. And we don't need to separate that off yet. We just need that part. Let's just stage it like that. Okay. I think we're ready to go. That little bit there is there again for some reason. Unlocking the fuels up here. And separation. And separation. Okay, right. Oh, I should have done it... Um, yeah, pointed normal first and then released it, but I guess this will be all right. Let's do the descent mode thing. Pod is looking red. Feel like F5ing just in case. I've had a glitch before that the pod exploded when it wasn't supposed to, so not in this save, but in a different save, so let's just take precautions. That was solved by just restarting the game. Ah, uh, we're getting more lift than I wanted again. We'll see. You can see the periapsis going up very quickly. No, I'm not going to wiggle about. Uh, I don't feel safe in Kerbal wiggling my capsule all over the place. Yeah, we'll just go around. Going around is quite nominal now. Okay, coming back down again, and where are we? Uh, we're gonna be in the South Indian Ocean. Well, I hope we have some recovery crews there. Alright, here we go again. Everything seems to be looking good. We're slowing down properly, and uh, we shouldn't be at any particular risk. Cross your fingers. Currently over Madagascar. Okay, we're through the thick of it. Everything seems to be fine. We haven't even used half of our blader. We are going up a bit, but we're not going to go beyond the atmosphere. We're just sort of coasting here. Okay, final leg of descent here. Joan and Lara returning home after a long stay around the moon. We're actually almost out of MMH and N204 here. I really shouldn't have let uh, control yaw. We really just needed it to hold roll. I think it might have been trying on pitch as well, I wasn't really noticing. Looking at other numbers. Okay, well, this is interesting. Uh, we appear to have reached India. <laughs> We're going to land in the middle of the southern part of India here. Not, uh, not your normal sort of landing, but I guess it'll be alright. I think it'll be alright. We are out of MMH and N204. Yes, definitely coming down in a city here. On the whole, not particularly safe just because you might, you know, glance off the edge of a building or something. And full deployment. Alright, everything is good. 9 meters per second might be a little bit. Ooh. A little bit harsh on the ground, uh, on the impact on the ground as opposed to the water. But okay, Joan and Lara have returned home safely, it looks like. Let's recover vessel. Okay, well, recovery of vessel. And uh, Joan and Lara both got, oh no, actually just Lara got 4 XP. Joan did not gain any XP. So that is done. 
let me take a look at what I might be building uh, in the meantime while we time warp these 23 days to Jovian 1 and while we let that uh, get built we will turn to Jovian 1 and handle that maneuver node. Okay here we are with Jovian 1 continuing its approach to Saturn and it's going to reach its uh, node in 23 days which is at its periapsis and we will try to make orbit around Saturn. So here we go. We've already done the high over Saturn science. Unfortunately, this doesn't have any commutrons on it to help with other missions. The missions that I intend to launch on the Voyager transfer window, those will have commutrons so that they can communicate with each other and support future missions. But these are just have the direct antenna. Now I have to watch out for the signal delay there. Uh, more than 80 minutes right now. The beauty of the Voyager transfer window is you can get to the other planets Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune much faster than on a straight home and transfer, so that's the benefit. Okay, let's see. I don't know if we are close to Saturn yet. Seems pretty darn close. Well, by the time these experiments actually happen, will be a lot closer. Yep, uh, just above Saturn's north temperate bands, the biological samples, 30 science, but it's good enough. North temperate bands, so that means that we'll get some other science for other biomes on the ones that say that. So temperature scan we can do again, but let's transmit this one. Micrometeorite detector we won't be able to. Geiger counter we can. And telemetry analysis we can. So that's a lot of science that we can we can get out of this. Especially since we're in a polar orbit. I I don't know about the orbital telescope. Not clear whether that's dependent on the surface biome. Okay, biological sample. Yes, transmit that. Trouble is, I have to plan ahead for passing over a particular biome because the signal delay is an hour. More than an hour. So I can't just uh, see that we're over a biome and then do the science experiments. They'll have to do it on the next pass once I know that there's another biome there. Or, you know, you could guess, I suppose. Okay, I think that does it. Let's continue. And once we are under 20,000 kilometers, we should fulfill the flyby contract. Let's, let's take a look at that. Yep, Saturn flyby is done. So we have done that thing. God, it feels really close to Saturn right now. All right, making orbit. This is going to take a while. As much as I'm not entirely sure about physical time warp. Oh, it doesn't want me to physical time warp anymore. Oh, this is the node, so we need to get rid of that. Okay. Um, yeah, just a little bit nervous about doing this this close to Saturn, especially with the atmosphere not entirely attached to the body of Saturn, I think. Seems a bit dodgy. Yeah, not too sure what that's about, the offset. But we're, we're here pretty darn close. Alright, well, unfortunately it looks like we did not have enough fuel to bring it into orbit around around Saturn. We'll uh, queue up some extra science to see what we can do. I think the orbital telescope wasn't biome dependent. Well, let's just try it. Um, yeah, we'll get what science we can on the way out, if we can get some. And that'll be that. Let's take a look at the resulting situation. Well, Hold on. No, that's the planned path. So 
we've we're still going out here and we well yeah <laughs> it's a 460 year to Apoapsis, so a 920 year orbit around the sun pretty extreme right there but it has done its thing it did what it came here to do gravity losses are out of this world by the way <laughs> not too sure about those gravity losses really but Okay, we're pretty high up, but it's still just above Saturn's stuff, so it counts. Orbital telescope observation did count. So many hundreds of units of science. We might end up with more than a thousand. We probably will end up with more than a thousand. So I think this calls for a visit to the tech tree. Might be good to add some more of the moons. I, I might have to cons- well, I don't know. RSS Expanded will mess up all our other probes because it flattens out the solar system, but I would like all the other moons. And comets and such. I'll have to think about that. Okay, over- well, just over a thousand science altogether now. And contract fulfilled. Uh, it was just more important that we don't fail it, but 600,000 and plenty of reputation that at risk there, so good to have done that. The real trick is the uncrewed Ganymede landing though. That's still coming up, otherwise... Oh, then we're probably going to fail that position of satellite in stationary orbit around Jupiter because of how tight that orbit is. Anyway, back to the Space Center and we will check out what we can do with this science. Alright, so we are already researching science tech and I added to that this field science because that's required for advanced science tech uh, and that will give us some rover wheels which is nice uh, about time but uh, advanced science tech is uh, more than 500 science technology and even though we can afford it we haven't upgraded the research building routine docking hmm Anyway, uh, just that one part there. Composites. I, I probably should just save my science right now so that we can get advanced science tech. Let's see how much it's going to cost to upgrade the building. I think it's going to cost like six million. So that's the rub. I don't want to be out of funds, but we've got some dicey missions coming up like the Ganymede Lander. And that's, well, no, it's only two million. Okay. Well, for two million, I guess we should go for it. All right, so we'll upgrade that. And as soon as it's upgraded, we can get the advanced science tech, which includes ISRU units. And that will begin a new era for our space program, hopefully. And not, not too long in the future, 191 days, and then we can queue that science. So maybe in a little bit more than a year. All right, so at this point, I'll say... Thank you for watching. I'll continue all our adventures in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.